I mean, actually, I don't know. I, I think I would probably look at. I, I feel like I'd want that light bulb if after a very long time. I don't know if you're gay. If <laughs> Brian, you're... go to the bathroom. Brian wants to do a Brian. Brian wants to do Brian wants to do a pod 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 podcast. Hey, hi, hello. This is Friend Dog Studios, and welcome to Brian Wants to Do a Podcast, the podcast where we're still not sure what kind of podcast we want to do. I'm Ben Oksher. Hey, I'm Brian Huther. And uh, Brian's got another idea. He thinks this one might be the winner. This might be the format that we stick with and that we dedicate our lives to and we rededicate our hearts to as we walk down that old church aisle. I know that there is one more person here. This podcast is speaking to their heart right now. And it's speaking to their heart with a megaphone. Oh, God. Accept this podcast oh, as God. your okay. favorite podcast. Our neighbors are going to murder us so hard. That, that, by the way, that was not an effect added in post. That was literally Brian actually on a megaphone. I have a real megaphone. Yeah, he sure does. I have been such a good boy. I have it's a true. megaphone. You have not abused that power. And I have windows, and there are a lot of joggers, and I have been so good. Yeah. So where's my treat? Well... Here's the thing. If you do something I like during this episode, I will toss you these off-brand Cheez-Its. Here's what they sound like. Mmm, this is sounds like cheese. Yeah, it sounds like cheese, but it's not because it's Savorit's Reduced Fat Cheese Crackers. What does it say underneath that? There's a badge on here that says, like, made with real cheese and natural cheese flavor. Like, what is that? What? If it's made with real cheese, why do you need natural cheese flavor? Right. It's just like it's made with real and fake cheese. <laughs> we combine the worst of both worlds to give you the cheapest cracker. I love when it says, so, you know, whatever percent real cheese product. Yeah. And look, I'm not a guy. I mean, I'm eating these. So obviously I'm not the kind of person who gets all in a tizzy about like the quote unquote artificial ingredients in foods. Like a lot of scientists have worked very hard to create delicious snacks for me. And I'm not really complaining. But still, why do we got to play these games? Hey, I want to backtrack a little bit. You said about something about getting in a tizzy. Yeah. Like I know what the expression being in a tizzy means, but I don't know that I've ever seen a person in a tizzy. No, <laughs> That's the kind of thing that a tizzy produces. Yeah, I, whatever you you're see doing. Somebody like that, you just you back off, you let him go. It's like don't wake a sleepwalker, don't tap a tizzy man. Yeah, and if you're going to to speak to them, make sure you do it from six feet away and use a megaphone. We are going to be evicted. <laughs> Brian, what's your idea for today's podcast? Ben, I have a question for you. What's the difference between supper and dinner? One of them is the word my grandma uses, and the other is the word my mom uses. I would like to do a podcast devoted specifically to answering this question. That one question? Not like a range of questions like that, like parsing out the difference. Ben, I don't know where it would go. At the beginning of the podcast, our the goal would be to determine what the difference between supper and dinner is. I have noticed some of these podcast ideas are gen pretty general, like the finer things. Yeah. This is like, I don't know, this huge category. And I think that specificity is the way to get a, a, get your dig out a little niche inside the flesh of man. Look, and I'm I'm not I'm not trying to negate the idea right out of the right out of the gate because then because if not you, trying to negate if you negate, negate out of the gate then all you're left with is ne. It's a double ne. It's a double negative and what you have then is you're off to the races. So help us, we will hire a team of researchers to find the joke in this <laughs> pile of words. Well, you know it's a negate neg negate if it's a, you know what? I do D oh, he's in a tizzy. He's in a tizzy. I'm in a tizzy now. I'm in a tizzy now. I'm up in a tizzy now. Oh, God. I'm going to take stop. it away from you. Put this microphone down. I'm, I'm putting take it, it away. down. I'm putting it down. I'm putting it down. Oh, you're not going to get any cheese crackers at this rate. Ben, think of the people we would interview. Imagine us sitting down with a couple in Tennessee who are like 80 thousand years old and they know the difference between supper and dinner because they were raised when those things were invented. And so then we have this amazing interview. It's like, when I was a younger boy, there was two meals in a day. One of them was when we 
got our mouths washed out with soap. And we called that Sopa. And I don't know. We meet these people, and then they invite us into their garage. Sure. And their garage is full of skeletons. Okay. And we, and all of a sudden, it's a re- you know, it's a re- and it just starts with the one question. Well, here's the thing, Brian. Sometimes, and I don't know how to break this to you. Just give me the information. We'll see. We'll see what happens. People have different words for the same thing. Following you so far. It varies from sort of language to language, dialect to dialect, region to region. Yes. I'm looking at my window. I see uh, the color green. I call that green. A Spanish speaking person would call it verde. It's the same thing. It's just called different. So things. you're you are proposing that supper and dinner are the same thing. I I can't imagine how they would be different things. And isn't that the most exciting, <laughs> the most exciting place to start is when you can't imagine what you might find. <laughs> Come on, give me a treat for that, right? Is that right. A treat? Let's toss it, toss it my way. Dig into the cheese box. Here we go. Oh my god, he actually got it in his mouth! As proof that I caught it, I am going to ruin your day by munching. Oh no, oh, oh, like, oh, oh gosh. Oh, oh. That was really bad. I munched into that microphone. Who in your life uses the word supper? Anybody? Does anyone in your life use the word? Some of the people that I feel like I'm doing a very bad sort of psychic cold reading now. Like I'm like, uh, (laughs) some there's a female energy come kind of coming in behind you, and I'm hearing it's an it's an S or that's my dog. Sad. Your dog. She's I named her sad. Yeah. Yeah. For seasonal appreciation disorder. That's what I'm because I really appreciate her in every season. Right. Right. And, and 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 she isn't dead, is she? No, not that I know of. She's at home right now. Is she dead? No, no. That's what I'm getting. I'm getting that she's alive. Um, that's it's. She's sort of projecting. Herself. Can I tell you some more information about her? Yeah, I just really feel like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she wears usually a pink collar. So I'm getting sort of a pink energy. Oh my god, he's from so her. good. He's really so good. Yeah. I'm getting sort of a pink. I don't know if that means anything to you. I love her. She has a pink collar. Yeah, around the neck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing I love you, and I'm hearing I have a pink she collar. She loves me? Yes. That's she what I'm loves getting. me back? She loves you. And she wears a pink collar like I gave her? That's what she is projecting herself across the astral plane to communicate with me, a psychic. And that's pretty much all psychics are. Um, Prove they aren't. <laughs> So who in your life uses the word supper? I don't know. I know some people back in Kansas City who uh, would use supper instead of dinner. It does feel uh-huh. like supper is more of a sort of uh, rural leaning yeah. word. I feel like dinner is a word that came from a time when people had servants. Okay. Like dinner. Yeah. Dinner is like something that gets served to you. And supper is just the thing that you make at your house. It, because you don't have any servants, because you're probably the servant. Ooh! So before we go into the dining room and serve the dinner to the, the house masters, I do believe I shall have a little toothful of supper for myself. You see, I shall eat this leftover taco over the sink. That was a very posh servant. I can I give you that feedback? Well, they have to be. It's I mean, right? Because it's a wealthy, wealthy family over at Glaston Estates. So the this 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 Glaston family, they yes. are so posh that their servants are also posh. They have a servant factory, and that's how they made their money. They made the going back generations, the mm-hmm. land that the Glaston Estates is built on actually has um rich servant deposits. <laughs> <laughs> the story is that uh, Master Glastonbury, the Duchess of Haverterry. That's me! I've got my Terry's! He's a, he's, he's a mister, but he's also a duchess. Yeah. Uh, which is was just fun for him. We're strangely progressive. And he was out amongst the grounds. And ah, look at all these grounds. They're all mine. Fuck you, Sky! <laughs> I have my grounds. And then, almost in response to his cursing of the weather, the the sky began to rain drops of water from its clouds, <laughs> and a, a torrent of water came down upon Why him. Why are you ignoring me right now? 
in the story, Mr. Narrator. I'm a cl- I play an important role. Oh, th- there was a cloud as well. Nobody asks a cloud how the cloud's doing. They just say, oh, it looks like rain and they go inside. Maybe the cloud wants to do hang, hang out. Maybe I wouldn't cry so much if you were not there. I'm so sorry, Mr. Cloud. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But to be fair to us, and the, fa- the fact is that I think that most humans did not know you were a sentient being until this exact moment. Why are you talking to that cloud? I'm I just, down I'm, here on the ground. I just, I just need to make a point to this cloud real quick. Mr. Glastonbury, Duchess of ha- Haston. Terry. There's a fun mnemonic device that helps you remember what my name is. What is it? It's just, uh, that one, that's her, his name. That one, that's his name? Yep. How is that a mnemonic device? If you take all the letters in there, rearrange them a bit, double some up, add some others, it spells out my name. So but in order to remember your name, quickly and efficiently, you have to do a jumble? It does get a bit confusing. It can get me into a tizzy if I'm not careful. Okay, well, while you have your tizzy, I just want to say, Mr. Mr. Cloud, if you express your needs, then you have a better chance that they will be met. And I just think that's an important thing to remember. So that's my advice for you. Um, so then what happened, Benjamin, yeah. is that the Duchess looked at the ground being washed away by the crying cloud, and there was a face. And that's how he discovered the rich servant deposits. Yeah. Started digging, and there were quite a few of those servants who didn't make it through the digging process because he just wasn't sure, and he didn't call that number, you know? That number you're supposed to call to make sure you don't dig through any servants. <laughs> but the point is, people who were that rich, they would call it dinner. And the people who were not rich, they would call it supper. Okay. And Jesus was not rich. And that's why he called it the last supper, not that's the right. last dinner. That's right. If it was the last dinner, then it'd be like a thing. It would have been rude to talk about how he was going to die soon. If it was a dinner, it would have involved like RSVPs. Place cards. Place cards. There would be... A seating arrangement. Jesus would have had to sit down and make a seating arrangement. Judas would have brought everything to a halt when he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I actually, I needed the gluten-free. I take this bread, said Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it is my body. And Judas chimes in. No, on my RSVP, I did put that I needed a gluten free bread. I did. I did. I did mark that. I don't know if you have an option. And then the, the server is like, oh, I'm sure we can find something for you, sir. And, and if it was a dinner, then everybody would have had a plus one, except for Jesus, who had a plus two. Right. He's got to bring his dad. <laughs> his dad is there, and the Holy Spirit is kind of in the corner, like, no, it's fine. I'll stand. I'll stand. Like, you're not going to stand. This is ridiculous. Yeah, no, no, no. He's like, I'm a spirit. I don't even need a place to sit. It's like, no, 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 no. So that's why it was called the Last Supper, because right. all that formality is gone when it's just called a supper. You know what? They did. They eschewed it. They eschewed all that formality. They did. I'm trying to think of other famous dinners and suppers. There was the first supper. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about the first supper. Yeah, where we, Jesus, where Jesus had solid food for the first time. Yeah, and and Mary was like, "Thank God." Yeah, this is great. And G- and baby Jesus was like, "You're welcome." Yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a cracker I could throw you right now. <laughs> throw me a cracker. I need to throw you a cracker. All right. Here we go. All right, he caught it. Here we go. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, no, I'm too afraid of it. It's... I was aiming for your heart. Well done. Oh, God. He's got it back. Uh, should we look into these words? Perhaps do a little internet research? I think we should. This is my favorite part of every podcast, when two dudes eventually just end up reading Wikipedia. Hey, man. It's a tried, honored tradition. What? It, know, is, it is a tradition. I, was, I mean, you used to work at like a talk radio station, right? For, like, for, yeah, for quite a long, so like, quite a bit. I mean, those guys just talk for hours. And how often were they just riffing on just a thing that they were reading? Like a oh, news article? Almost or a, always. Almost always. Chris Kobach would send me links to a bunch of Drudge uh, links. Since he was like, print these off, I'll just talk about whatever that is. Yeah. And he would talk about it like it was something he'd been thinking about, you know? My my parents would listen to like Rush Limbaugh in the car all the time. And I remember having that realization of just like, oh, he's just reading stuff. And just like reacting to it. Like, yeah. It sounds like he's presenting it's it. It's reaction videos. Yeah. he's pres- from, from a different era. 
He's presenting it as though this is something he's researched and like thought through, but clearly not because he does it like five hours a day. Yeah. He's just sitting and reading and just taking a very hard stance about what he's reading. I would like reading. to hear Rush Limbaugh just read like some Charles Dickens or something. Hello, my friends. Rush Limbaugh here on the EIB Excellence in Broadcasting Network. You get a cracker. <laughs> Just from remembering that. I, hours and hours. Yeah, and me hours. too, but I didn't remember it. <laughs> We're going to open up the phone lines here in just a little bit. To begin with, I got to talk about this. I got to talk about this. Shuffling papers. Shuffling papers on my desks. I got to talk about this. Peace in a book by that luminary, Charles Dickens. Coming in to tell us what we all need to think about stuff. Marley was dead. This, this is his words, not mine. Marley was dead to begin with. There's no doubt whatever about that. The register of his burial was signed by clergymen, the clerk, the undertaker, and the chief mourner. Now, why do we need so much bureaucracy around death? We need four different people to tell me that one person is dead. These are your tax dollars at work, people. This is what it's going to. And Mr. Dickens seems to think that's necessary. Seems to think it's right. This is the liberal mindset. It continues. And Scrooge's name was good upon change for anything he chose to put his hand to. I'm not a terribly literate man. Not sure what that means. Old Marley was dead as a doornail. Now, folks, I don't know why we need that kind of vulgarity in a book that we are writing for children? For kids? Is this what you want? Is this what we need? We need Monica Lewinsky. Let's put her on TV every, every five minutes forever. And then let's talk about doornails and being dead. I'm sorry to repeat it. I'm sorry to repeat it. Starting to like this Scrooge fella. <laughs> I just, you know what I realized? I have a bowl of popcorn over here. <laughs> and I, I'm going to throw you. Are you going to toss me a popcorn? Yeah. Here you go. All right. I've never been good at catching food in my mouth. It, it, I get too nervous. I, I mean, but also maybe I threw it bad. You know? I get nervous. I, get, I feel like it's going to hit me in the eye and I get yeah. nervous. Yeah, mom's spaghetti. You know, this, all this stuff is making me hungry, Ben. And oh. I just could go for some bread and butter. And you know what our bread and butter is? What's that, Brian? It's Patreon. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Uh, Patreon is the bread of, of life and butter is just butter. Yeah, take and eat of this. Our bread, our flesh, patreon.com slash friend dog. It's a place where you can uh, throw a little bit of money in the tip jar if you enjoy our content, our podcasts, or our videos. And it's really appreciated. We know that times are tough right now. A lot of people don't have the same kind of expendable income that they did. So uh, there are more urgent needs. No worries if this is not something you can make happen right now. If you'd like to support us in a way that is not financial, uh, something that genuinely makes a huge difference, like I, it cannot be exaggerated, is leaving reviews. Uh, wherever you get your podcast and just sharing it with a friend, anyone who you think might be interested in this kind of silly bullshit. If you don't have people who listen to funny podcast, just tell them maybe give this one a try. There's some friends of yours, you know, um, you can tell them that you're friends of ours. Yeah, they're not going to know and we're not going to know. Yeah, we have no way of tracking these things. So if you want to pretend to be friends with us, all you got to do is share the podcast, rate it or throw us a little bit of money like friends do at patreon.com slash friend dog. We were going to look at the definitions of these words or the histories of them. You know, I just found some information on um, a website. Oh, this, this one says dinner does not imply a time of day and simply references the main meal or the largest meal of the day. One can eat hmm. dinner at any time. And since there is no time implied, dinner has become the modern catch-all term for the evening meal. Um, this one says dinner and supper are generally synonymous when referring to a meal in the evening, but dinner can be considered by some to be somewhat more formal. Ah, ah, I was right. So there's, well, I mean, this particular quote agrees with what you said. I don't know that you... That were. means I'm right. Oh. Brian, if you find anything on the internet, anywhere, that agrees 
with your sentiment, your stated sentiment, that means you were correct and are correct and always will be. I have a megaphone. God, he's got the, we're going to get evicted. <laughs> okay. The term comes from the non-classical <laughs> Latin word, dis, I can't pronounce that. Try to pronounce it. Oh, uh, disjejunare. Disjejunare. Oh, okay. So. Disjejunare. That sounds sort of like desayuno, which is <gasps> the Spanish word for breakfast. We are making connections about roots. Look, on this podcast thus far, I've remembered two Spanish words, and I'm proud of myself because I studied Spanish for uh, five years. How and many? How do you say five in Spanish? Five. Supper, on the other hand, is more time specific. It stems from the old French word super. 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 Bon. Meaning an evening meal and it's generally lighter than the other meals served throughout the day. In other words, supper and dinner have more to do with the quantity of food that's served on the time of day and that you feast on them. So <laughs> we would ask many people across the United States of America, what is the difference between supper and dinner? Do you say supper? Do you say dinner? We would try to find people who have both. That would be a mate. Can you imagine an interview with the people who say both supper and dinner, they have two different meals. We come across the family that has the most meals ever. Yeah. They have like a breakfast, a second breakfast, a brunch, a lunch, a supper, a dinner, a, 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 a lover, a winner, a bitch, a, a lover, a child, a mother, a smoker, a joker, a midnight toker, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, a Jack and Jill who went up a hill, a tisket, a tasket, a red and yellow basket, a mother goose who stole a tooth, a man, a myth, a legend, a man, a canal, a plan, Panama. Let's do cones and prawns. Let's do cones and prawns. What do we have a cones and prawns song oh right? yeah yeah it's like cones and prawns what's going on i'm low in my song no i'm lower it's cones and prawns it's getting closer yeah, that, was, that was better yeah we'll yeah. keep on workshopping it so i think one cone is that it's a. Uh, Potentially very limited. Uh, I, I fear that we may burn this concept out in the first episode. Counterpoint. Yeah. The sentence you said was potentially limited. If something has potential, is it limited? Maybe that potential means that it isn't limited. In which case, it does no, it no longer has the potential to be limited. Okay, well, you certainly did repeat words a few times, so that must have been a good point. Yeah, yeah, that's the internet, right? Got any cones or prawns? Um, You know, I think one of the prawns, we can meet some interesting people <laughs> yeah. off of this idea. We could look back, we could use it as a way to look back in American history and British history. Find out how they started mining servants in the first place and where... <laughs> Where Jackson's lunch pail got off to when it married the spoon or whatever. Another prawn. Mm -hmm. I like eating. So if we could incorporate that into the show. Maybe I every episode happens during... We have a meal. We have one microphone for talking into and the other microphone for eating into. Right. And we don't use the audio from the second microphone. But it's Just there. to make sure. We make sure to record it so that we're sure we don't use it. Yeah. I think I think a cone is that oh man we'd have to talk to so many people right which is just exhausting wouldn't it be better for the two of us to sit here and quote and reference one another in circles just forever. in circles forever just slowly cut off just slowly cut off all, all other sources, sources of, input. of information I oh, said input information there's hope yet in perf in for Pitmation. I'm trying to find the singularity of the English language, I think. Yeah. I mean, my best guess right now is something like, her. So <laughs> I think that uh, we both have an interest in words, and that is a cone, my friend. That's a cone. So scale one to ten, Brian. One being, can't do this podcast, won't do this podcast. Ten, of course, being, this is the next big idea. It's going to make us rich. Where do you rate? Now oh, he's pulling up the megaphone. It's a three. I am going to give it a two. Ooh, I don't think we've had a two yet. Or a no, three. No, we've had, we had a couple of ones. You know what I'd like to tell you is that this idea is something I just threw into my head at the very last minute. Mm -hmm. I've had this one on the list for quite a while. <laughs> and maybe we should check in on the full, you know, the full progress of this thing. Because this is our eighth episode. 
Yeah. My original eight ideas that I had written down at the very beginning of this podcast. We've gone through them all. We've and you know, Brian, I unfortunately, I don't think we found the idea yet that we love enough that we're ready to commit to it. <sighs> wow. I feel so disappointed i know we gotta make one of these ideas work this is what we have we're just gonna have a bad podcast no 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 not necessarily we could keep looking for a little while and and if you are running low on ideas well hey i just realized what this podcast got has to have like upwards of three listeners oh wow one of them might have an idea for a podcast, right? Wow. So maybe we could start getting suggestions for ideas from our audience. It's not called Brian has an idea for a podcast. No, it's, it's just called Brian, Brian wants, wants to, to do, do a podcast. podcast. So it doesn't have to be my idea. No, all you have to have is that want in your heart, and we can't be sued for lying. I just need to stay horny for podcasts. That's all that God ever wanted from you, Brian. God wanted me to be horny this whole time, and he never told me that joker. It's the Christmas miracle. It's the Christmas miracle. Everybody who's listening... Right now, use all your power. Believe as hard as you Believe can. Believe as hard as you can, and then go to Twitter or contact us in any way. You can send us ideas to our email account, dogandfrienddog at gmail.com. You can tweet at us at friendogstudio or, you know, other ways, but one of those should be sufficient. Yeah. Send us your ideas. You can text me at 913 913- Maybe you should beep that out. Oh, go ahead. My social security number is... So send us your ideas, and we'll get to work on them on the next episode of Brian Wants to Do a Podcast. Stay horny, everybody. He said that through a megaphone.